It's okay. I still love you. How much of that did you see? So we are back with another video. Before we do get started with the topic of today's video, if you could, be sure to leave a like, as that will help me out in the algorithm a bunch. You, if you don't leave a like. Took a sip, then another sip, then somebody said to me, Nigga, why you baby sitting on me two or three shots? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Be sure to turn notifications on so you don't miss any future uploads, and let's get right into it. In case you can tell by my name, uh, I am a Knicks fan. Oh, wait. I just, I just realized. Oh, shit, my bad. Three, two, one. Bam. I saw a thing on Twitter, NBA Twitter, you know how much I love NBA Twitter, where people were saying that Monty Williams, head coach of the Phoenix Suns, deserved to win coach of the year over the actual winner, Knicks coach, Tom Thibodeau. Don't get me wrong, Monty Williams is a fantastic coach. He's done a great job with this Suns team. He deserves a lot more recognition than he gets. Tom Thibodeau did deserve coach of the year. I'm going to explain why, obviously, because I know right off the bat you're probably thinking, Knicks, oh my god, the Suns are in the finals, the Knicks got bounced in the first round, ah! Like, I, I know how your mindset works, trust me, I understand. I mean, at least we didn't get swept, so dude. The New York Knicks this year to start out the season were projected to win 22 games, I believe it was. It was between 20 to 22 games. What's up, guys? 5.30 a.m. Knicks. Just kind of figured I'd throw a little stat at you real quick. The Knicks this year, under Thibodeau, were... First in points allowed, first in field goals allowed, first in opposing three-point percentage and field goal percentage. Last year, under the myriad of coaches that we did have, they were 18th in points allowed, they were 28th in opposing three-point percentage, 16th in opposing field goal percentage. So, yeah, I think I forgot to add that in the video, so there we go. They brought on Tom Thibodeau. They had, the Knicks had a starting lineup of Alfred Payton, RJ Barrett, Reggie Bullock, Julius Randle, and Nerlens Noel for a majority of the season. Now, three out of five of those sound normal, right? Uh, in case y'all didn't know who the other two sore thumbs were. Alfred Payton and Reggie Bullock. Not even an issue with Reggie Bullock. Reggie Bullock was a good 10-point a game guy as a starter, shooting over 40% from three. Nothing bad with that. Alfred Payton, though, one of the worst players on the court every single night. And I know everyone's like, oh my god, Nick, he brought defense and all that. Yeah, he can play defense. In my opinion, Alfred Payton is good for being a good player on a bad team. He did it in Orlando. He did it in Phoenix a few years ago. He did it in New Orleans. He did it last year in New York. He was great last year in New York. In my opinion, he can't contribute to a winning team. I'm finished with my Alfred Payton rant because this is not about Alfred Payton. But the fact that Alfred Payton was our starting point guard and we won 41 games and got the four seed in the East, we got home court advantage after missing the playoffs for seven to, or what was it, eight years? How are you going to discredit that? Dude turned Julius Randle into an MVP candidate and an all-star. And yes, Julius Randle did get MVP votes. He was a candidate. He was top 10. Also, you know who was, ironic enough? Derrick Rose, but we're not going to talk about Derrick Rose. We have two MVP candidates. Let's go. We did get knocked down in the first round by the Hawks, but to be fair, a lot of our team did not have playoff experience. Even Alfred Payton. RJ Barrett, it was his second year in the league. Of course, he never had playoff experience before that. Julius Randle has been in the league for seven to eight years. He just won most improved, made all NBA second team, and this was his first playoff series, and of course, he played like Dookie. Knicks were also missing guys. We were also missing key players like Mitchell Robinson. We did have good players like Derrick Rose, who was a fantastic addition. We were missing guys like Mitchell Robinson, and this is something I didn't cover in my last video about the Suns. People were literally putting every injury in the NBA, Eastern, Eastern, Eastern and Western Conference and saying that's why the Suns made it to the finals. They literally had Mitchell Robinson in there as a reason why Chris Paul was in the finals. You can't make this shit up. And yeah, we did lose in the first round. We completely underwhelmed. But at the same time, we were not projected to be a playoff team. He did this 10 years prior too in Chicago. He took the Bulls from a 41 and 41 record and made them the best team in the East and gave Derrick Rose an MVP. It's not like rocket science. I believe Monty Williams was a close second and as he should have been. Again, no hate towards Monty Williams. He's a fantastic coach for a fantastic team, but the Suns have a lot more to work with than the Knicks. They had Chris Paul, who also made the second team. They had Devin Booker, who was almost an all-star snub. They have DeAndre Aiden, the former number one pick who's been great. Jay Crowder with tons of playoff experience, including going to the finals as recent as last year. And they have a solid bench too. They have Cameron Payne who really emerges here. Mikhail Bridges is becoming really good. They have Cam Johnson. So yeah, the Suns had a really good team and they had a really good regular season. I believe they were second in the West. They were expected to make the playoffs. There was no shocker when the Suns clinched. That's the thing though. That was expected. 
for Monty Williams, Thibodeau turning that team around was insane. He did the same thing in Minnesota too. The first year he was in Minnesota, he took that team from, I think they were the worst team in the NBA or one of the worst teams in the NBA and made them an eight seed. And there would have been higher if Jimmy Butler didn't get hurt. And I know it's not just entirely Thibodeau. I think Derrick Rose was on that team too. That was the year they had Jimmy Butler and Cat working together, Wiggins, etc. But Thibodeau's a great coach. Was I shocked when he won coach of the year? Yeah, I honestly didn't think he was going to, but I thought he deserved it. And then when he did, I was ecstatic. I really was. Tom Thibodeau does deserve this. NBA Twitter, I want to call it recency bias, but again, Monty Williams is a good coach. He was also a part of turning that Suns team into a championship team. They were the worst team or one of the worst teams in the NBA two years ago. They had 19 wins. And now they're up 2-0 in the finals and looking like they're going to win a championship. So again, all the credit in the world to the Suns. But the Knicks just had a really good year. Obviously, we didn't do it by ourselves because we're bozos for some reason. You gotta thank guys like Tom Thibodeau, who pieced it all together. A defensive mastermind coach made Nerlens Noel, who is a great defender, made him look like a top 5 defender in the league because he was this season. He made Julius Randle most improved. He made Derrick Rose almost 6 man of the year. So again, to wrap it up, for the, for the 15th time, Yes, Tom Thibodeau deserves to win coach of the year. You can have your own opinion because I know it's a close race, but just know that Tom Thibodeau deserves it. That's basically it. I don't really have a whole lot else to say. Thank you all for watching today's video. Again, if you do enjoy today's video and you do want to see some more videos like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Be sure to turn notifications on so you don't miss any future uploads. If you want to see more content from me, be sure to drop a follow on my Twitch and my Twitter. My links will be down in the description. I have a second channel where I post on non-basketball related topics. So if you do want to take a look at that, be sure to go uh, check that out. Leave a sub if you enjoy. That's it for me. I will see you all in the next video. Peace, peace.